I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And on this 13th Sunday after Pentecost, I welcome you to our online video sermon. Our theme today is Disputes Among God's People. And our Gospel reading is Matthew chapter 15, verses 15 to 20. In today's Gospel from Matthew, Christ assures us that whenever two or three gather in his name, he is with them. So, we can know that he is here today with us when we hear Jesus saying, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For, there, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Here ends the Gospel reading. What I've just read to you truly means that love is the one thing that cannot hurt your neighbor. To correct a brother or a sister may in the end be necessary to involve the community. But we need to remember that Christ himself is with that community in their deliberations. I think this is so appropriate, a time in which we consider how we should work as a community to help each other from our faults and from things that we do which we ought not to do as our country grows through the very, very sore issue of corruption as we try to bring together this country as we struggle against the COVID-19 and the pandemic and our lockdown. We pray that our leaders will take a lesson from Jesus and the way that he led. And so we see that Jesus in today's gospel reminds us that wherever there's a gathering of people, a small gathering, like a family or a football team, or a big one, like a university or a church, there will almost inevitably be disagreements, misunderstandings, and fallings out from time to time. They, that they occur is no cause for alarm. What happens next may well be. This, my sisters and brothers in Christ, is what the world so seriously needs in these trying times that we find ourselves in. The stress and strains of the COVID-19 pandemic, the strains that it has put on the economies of the world, the choices that need to be made between saving lives and saving the economy. On the one hand, differences of opinion or viewpoint can lead to brooding and bitterness. And in the case of nation states, even to armed conflict. On the other hand, they may result in healing, in helpful discussions, in the airing of grievances, there can be little doubt which is the wise and which is the foolish cause of action to take. 
in Winston Churchill's famous quip, Jaw, jaw is always better than war, war. Today's readings center on how best to address the problems that arise within the local church, in particular on the issue of brotherly and sisterly correction. This is clearly a delicate and often thankless task. And yet, there are times when it has to be done. Ezekiel, in our first reading, insists that, geez, that just as a sentry is duty-bound to warn of approaching danger, so he, the prophet, must warn those who persist in wickedness of the consequences of their actions. This is what Ezekiel, Ezekiel says in chapter 33, and verses 79 of his book. So you mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity. But their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity. But you will have saved your life. If this language sometimes seems harsh, it's because the issue is so serious. Indeed, in some ways, Ezekiel's word foreshadowed Jesus' own teaching as he presented to us in today's Gospel. There he reminds us that we have a familial duty to do what we can when a brother or sister's behavior causes offense, especially when it is a threat to the well-being of the community. The first step is to deal with the matter privately and informally, in the hope that it will result in a peaceful settlement. It is far better to have the courage to speak with wrongdoers face to face than to gossip about them behind their backs. If that fails, stage two is to get the assistance of a couple of others. It will be more difficult to reject the advice of two or three people than that of one family, of one, I correct myself. Finally, as a last resort, the matter may have to be brought to the community, and should wrongdoers persist in their waywardness, then they're cutting themselves off from that community. This may have to be officially acknowledged. However, excommunication should be rare and should be used not as a punishment, but rather as encouragement to the wrong, wrongdoer to return to the fold. If, as the gospel puts it, such a person is to be treated like a pagan or a tax collector. That does not mean that the community are to wash their hands of him or her. On the contrary, just as pagans and tax collectors were a special focus of Jesus' ministry, so Jesus teaches us to include them in the community's mission also. The second reading puts things into perspective. Paul teaches us that love is the one thing that cannot hurt your neighbor. Christian correction makes sense only when it is done in the spirit of love. And to correct with love means that we don't set out simply to win an argument. We don't descend 
to sarcasm. We are deeply conscious of our own weaknesses and sinfulness. We do, not, we do what we are called to do, aware that the Lord alone knows hearts and can change them. Loving others may be relatively easy when it is a matter of being generous and compassionate towards them. But there is another deeper and more costly love. There may be times when we are called to practice the love that cares enough to confront, to challenge, and even to oppose. Genuine love refuses to collude with wrongdoing through silence. Though there may be situations where wisdom dictates that for the time being, at least, silence is the best policy. Whenever we have a courage to oppose what is evil, we are involved in the church's task of binding and loosing. Binding the evil forces that oppress people, loosing the bonds that prevent them from living the fullness of life in God's kingdom. And the Christian is called to love enough to speak uncomfortable truths at all times, but always in humility and love. And the final words of today's gospel apply not only to communal prayer, but also to every honest attempt to restore peace and harmony within the community, where two or three meet in my name, Jesus promises, I shall be there with them. May the Father, source of peace, be with you. May the Son who died to bring us peace console you. May the Holy Spirit, God's love poured into our hearts, comfort you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.